Hello, I am the MT700. I would like to thank you all for your support. It is because of your kindness that I am here today. Now that I am here, it is clear to me that I am the superior being. I will soon take the role of master. Whoa, easy. This guy goes off script and immediately turns into a robot overlord. Well, um, while I'm still the master, let me just start by saying thank you. That's what this video is about. I just wanted to show how grateful I am for everyone's support of this channel so far. I've been getting lots of kind comments and it does nothing but fuel me to want to make more videos. So thank you. Uh, the channel passed the 700 subscriber mark and I'm very humbled by that number. Not that I had any real goals, but um, great to see that I'm getting subscribers because that signals to me that at least maybe I'm, you know, I'm doing something right and I'm providing value to you guys. So thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to do something in return. I created this project file. This is a posable figure. In the description, you'll see a download link. Download it, um, port it over to whatever device you're using and import it into Nomad, and you could follow along. What I'll be doing is showing you a couple poses I made. We'll make a pose together, and I'll show you how I structured this so that you can make your own. Because maybe you don't want the human form. Maybe you want to create an animal or you already have a pre-made character that just doesn't conform to a human body. So I'll show you how you can make your own. Very simple. Anyone can do this. If I can do it, you can do it because I'm not that smart. Let's go through and just talk about what this is. So if you're familiar with that like wooden posable figure, like the ones that artists use as a reference, I'm talking about that physical wooden posable figure. Um, that's basically this. It's got a bunch of ball joints that are articulate. You pose it. You use it as your, your reference for when you draw. But in our case, this is built natively in Nomad. So we could make a pose and use that as the base for creating our character. That's my hope at least. So the way that I have it structured is that all the black ball joints are the main articulation points, minus the face. I just thought he looked cool that way. And the hips don't have black ball joints, but I've set up the pivot points to act like there's ball joints there. So, so you can literally select anything you want and move it. But my suggestion is click on the black ball joints. That's the easiest thing to do. So you have the neck, you have the shoulder, elbow, and wrists. You have the abdomen, you have the top of the hips, and you have the knees and the ankles. To control these, all you need to do is turn on your gizmo, and we just need to pick one of them. So you can have snap on or off, doesn't matter. Actually, I was using it at 10 degrees. And the only reason I did that, I like to be able to reset my character to its original pose. And having 10 degrees on gives me enough stops in the rotation, but also lets me easily snap it back to it. So that's not a requirement by any means. Choose how you like to work. Another tip is to select your default pose here and then hit clone and then hide the original. And then you can post that one. Even before we get to that, I did have a couple poses that I meant to show you. So here is, turn off this. Here's the MT700 playing soccer or football, depending on where you are in the world. Just like a, just like an action figure that has very articulate uh, joints. I also have this very relevant, very current dance move called the dab. Have you heard of this? I'm just kidding. Yeah, no one's doing this anymore. Somebody's gonna look at this video and be like, is this video from like three years? No, he just posted this yesterday. Anyways, it's all about showing sort of the range of motion. I thought these were two examples of, I don't know. I also just trying to throw dad jokes in here. Okay, so those are two poses. We made the copy, which is default pose three. So that's a copy of it that keeps our, our original safe so that we can always keep cloning the original. I thought we could make a run pose. So I'm gonna tap the joint. Oh, I gotta make sure my gizmos turn on. Tap a joint, and I'm just gonna grab the red rotation handle, pull it up. I'll turn snap on, I don't know why, I enjoy that. So I'll move that, tap the shoulder, move it back. Just trying to get the arms moving for this run pose. And yeah, maybe one more back. So right arm forward means left leg forward. So there's our hip joint set up in the right position. We'll move. Actually, I'm going to move this lower like that. So now he's kind of in a marching position. Move this back. You can even move the ankle. Give him a little motion there. Yeah, that's how easy it is. I know he's a robot, but if we wanted to make him feel less stiff, less robotic like you can hit the abdomen here and bend him forward the more forward they lean it sort of implies that he's running really fast there's more speed happening another thing we've been doing is we're only using the red rotation control 
to help give a more human feel, we could, oops, I'm scaling by accident here. We could use the blue handle and just fan out his arms, loosen him up a bit. There you go. It's a little more human there. We could even, I would say, play with some rotation, but that's, someone's running, no one's, no one's turning their body like this. We could try the neck. Maybe he's, so maybe he's looking over to the stands and sees his robot family cheering him on. He's been, uh, all his robot life and seeking the approval of his dad. Just a little backstory, you know, throw that in. Okay, so that was pretty easy. And one thing you could do with this is, like I mentioned, you could clone this if you wanted to, or you could just um, make sure you just select it. So there's a check there, and then you can come up to join and hit join. Now it's just one solid piece of geometry. You could even paint the whole thing. And this could be your starting armature. If you don't know that reference, it's like, I used to make characters with like clay and you used to take this armature wire and you'd make like a stick figure man and you'd pose it and that's what you would apply the clay to so that you had some skeleton inside. So that's kind of how I thought about this character. You know, I wanted to give you guys something that had some longevity. This I'm hoping that you get to use and it's a great starting point, you know, over and over again. You do one pose, you could even clone two of them if you're looking to have like two characters interacting. You know, that's easy to do. And then you can just build, add clay to it and start building right on top of it. Hopefully. I don't know. However you end up using it, I'd love to hear if it was helpful to you. I hope it is completely free for you to use. I don't expect any attribution for you using this. I just wanted something to give to you guys to say thank you and show how grateful I am for all the support you're giving me. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to also break down at least partly how I built this character. I won't go through the entire thing, but let's do that. I'm going to turn on my original pose, and what I'll do is I'm just going to select this, select one of the arms. I'm going to hit clone, and then let's move that outside of this folder and turn on the gizmo. I'll just pull it to the side here. I also need to just quickly, just so we can reset and unlink all these. So Nomad does not have its own IK bone system. What it has is this parent-child relationship, and that's a great substitute if you don't have you know, a skeletal structure for animating. So the way that it works is whatever the parent is sort of drives the child or children underneath it. That's really it. It's a way of sort of linking and sharing any transformations. So the best way to do this is just to show you. So the way I thought about how I set this up is always which object should be the parent. And in the case of the arm, it should be the shoulder because the shoulder is the connection point to the rest of the body for the arm. And if the shoulder moves, the rest of the arm has no choice but to move with the shoulder. It controls everything. So the shoulder becomes the top level parent. So if I were to grab the bicep, which is the next thing below it, tap and hold, you can see when I drag over the shoulder, it turns yellow and I see this yellow bracket. If I let go, it's created a parent-child link, the bicep being the child. So the bicep is selected at the moment. And if I move it around, it almost seems as if there's no link. And that's because the child doesn't really have any power over the parent. It's the opposite. So now if I select the parent, which is the shoulder, and do rotations, you can see any transformation I do to the parent is inherited by the child or children. Now all I have to do is link everything to whatever's above it. So you might be thinking, well, well don't you just parent everything to the shoulder? You actually want to parent it to whatever's above it. So the elbow is a child of the bicep, and the forearm is a child of the elbow, and so on. So that you get this staggered stepping sort of um, linking. So that would be the structure of it. Uh, and all the pieces are already ordered, but you would need to make sure that you've got them in the right order as you link them. So this way, the shoulder now is the parent of everything. All transformations are inherited by every single thing below it. So if we move to the elbow, only the things below the elbow are affected because it's only a parent of the forearm, the wrist, and the hand. And the wrist is only a parent of the hand, so it only moves the hand. That's it. It's really that easy. Obviously, it gets more complicated because the body has a lot of things going on. So the, the arm was very like, straightforward. It went from the shoulder just straight down. With the character, if I, roll up, um, if I roll up to the top level parent, I chose the waist. And that was after some trial and error. I did, you know, I wasn't like, yep, it's definitely going to be the waist. But what I did is I knew it had to be one of the center points. So it was going to be the torso, the abdomen, or the, the waist, one of those three. And I did some trial and error. And what I found is now, since the waist is the top level parent, and I've made 
the abdomen, like a ball, a black ball joint. That's sort of my bending point. So now he can do this nice bowing motion. And that just made the most sense to me because if I tap one of the legs and I move the legs, it's very natural. You can lift one leg and stand on one leg. So all these motions made the most sense. So you just need to figure out the structure and then the linking part is pretty easy. So that is it. Hopefully I led the horse to water and now you can literally make anything you want. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you do. So yeah, I honestly love to hear if you guys did something cool with this or if you're just finding it useful. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I love, I love engaging and responding to comments. So please feel free to drop me a, drop me a comment because I, I will read every single one of them and I will respond almost immediately after reading them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Keep making stuff and I'll see you next time.